Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'm going to use up some of my scraps and remnants from one of my bags of what are you keeping that for and I'm going to show you how I created some boxes and bins. My dolls are preparing for the harvest and they're going to need bins, boxes, and bags to bring their fruits and vegetables home from the market. And I also think they'll need a few burlap bags and I'll show you how to make that as well. So I started my process by sorting out the types of sticks that I was going to need and because the boxes are pretty small I found the sticks that had the most length on them so I would be able to cut them to size and after I got the ones I needed and cut them to size I sorted them based on the part of the box I was going to use them for. Now this is the type of box I'm going to create today and I actually made this a couple years ago during my bags, boxes, and luggage series and I will leave a link in the description for that. So here are all my sorted sticks and I cut them in several different sizes. Now let me show you the box in more detail. Now each side has four popsicle sticks and the bottom was two jumbo craft sticks. And then I used a really skinny coffee stir stick to bind the edges. So here I am, I've got them all sorted and stacked the way they're gonna be. So you see every four sticks is going to be a side of the box. And I'm just sanding off the edges so they'll be as uniform as possible. I don't want them to be perfect because I want them to look like boxes that were ruggedly created just to be sturdy for the purpose of carrying the crates home. Now, if you want your boxes to be really, really neat and perfect, you'll need to take extra time to measure each one and cut it precisely, which you know, dolls, that's not what I do. I cut them roughly the size that they should be and I'm trimming off and sanding as I go. Now in this frame you can see I've found four sticks that are roughly the same length and I line them up because they're going to be a side. So I add a sparing amount of glue between each one and then slide them next to each other to create one panel. Now to create the type of box I'm going to make, you can make four to six panels like this, depending on whether you want a lid or not. And if you don't have jumbo craft sticks, go ahead and make six panels. So I realized my jumbo craft sticks were extra wide, so I only used one of them and two popsicle sticks. My original box had two jumbo craft sticks at the bottom for the base of my box. And this pattern actually works really well to be the lid as well. Now you definitely wanna be sparing with your glue because you don't wanna oozing up between the slats, but you can just clean it up really neatly so everything will dry nice. Now again, the great part about using well bond glue, the snatch on it is great. And when I say the snatch, it grabs really quickly, which is really a plus because it begins to set up quickly. Now this is definitely a project that it would be a good idea to utilize some weights. Now here I'm just using a one, two, three block to ensure that piece dries nice and flat. Now here's a very clear example of how I didn't cut the popsicle sticks even or the same length at all. But no worries, my Swan Morton craft knife is really, really sharp and it's going to cut off those extras nice and even. Now that I trimmed that piece off, I just want to show you that the one panel I created with four popsicle sticks and the one that I used one super jumbo craft stick and two popsicle sticks is the same width. Now that I've created enough panels to make at least two good boxes, I want to show you something else I made. Now this little box was actually made when I was playing around with making boxes with the shingles and this one I never finished it and it was the perfect size for putting several bottles of wine in. Although it was the perfect size and when I stained it it looked nice and rugged but I wanted to make it look more crate like. So I'm adding some of my really thin coffee stir sticks to create sort of like the securing boards. If somebody knows what they're called, let me know in the comments, but it's that board that runs along the side of crates vertically rather than horizontally to keep everything secure. Now, although this box wasn't made with multiple sticks, I still think that little board adds a little realism. So I've decided to add it to the end of the box to raise up the side to make the bottles more secure. So I added a little glue to that open part and just added a really small piece of the tiny coffee stir stick to close it up on the side. And then I did the exact same thing to the other side. Now let's get back to these boxes. Now I'm showing you here how this one is made where two of the sides are put on horizontally and two of them are put on vertically. But I also wanna show you the way to use all four panels being horizontal all the way around first. Now you see me in this frame, I'm just adding my vertical strips 
to hold all the pieces together. It's not actually holding them, but it just makes it look more decorative and interesting to me. Now, many of these strips are already previously stained, which is going to make a nice variation when I darken the rest of the box. Now, here I am checking for matches to see which two of the panels are actually the same size so that my box will be relatively square when I assemble it. So now you can see I have two panels with the strips already attached. So it's time for me to start assembling my box. Now there are two different ways you can do this box. You can glue it to the outside of the perimeter of the base, or you can sit it on top. Based on how short I cut my panels, I'm actually gonna assemble my box on top of the base to ensure all the panels touch. Now, if you create your panels longer, then they'll be able to go around the outside or perimeter of your base, again, depending on how big you make your base. Now this technique really does work well for 12 scale and really well for 1 6 scale or Barbie scale. Again, it would just depend on the length of your boards that you create your panels with. Now here I am adding a sparing amount of the weld bond glue to attach one of the boards to the base of the box. Now I use my 1 2 3 box to kind of brace the piece while the glue set up, but it worked really quickly and I was able to move along to the next piece without a long wait. Now dolls, I am experiencing EGU or excessive glue use during this process, but I'm not concerned about it because all of these bins are gonna be filled with fruits and vegetables, so you won't see my glue spills. But if your box is gonna be empty and visible, you may wanna be a little bit more careful with allowing your glue to ooze out. Now you can see in this frame, I've already added three of my boards to the base and the ones on the end kind of extend out. Now here I did push one of my little Lego cubes over in the corner. Now I wanna be clear that no authentic Legos were harmed, damaged, or misused in the process of making these boxes. These are dollar store, no name Lego blocks. So Dallas, I wanna show you here, this is what happens when you don't do actual precision measuring. So one of my sides was just like I wanted and the second side was too short. So I had to go through my little selection of panels that I created to find one that matched the original one I put on the box. Now that my first box is all assembled, I can allow it to dry. Now I will be adding those additional supports vertically, but before I move on to that, let me show you something else. Now I did wanna make some smaller boxes with like the slats that you can see through. So to start this process, I cut those super jumbo craft sticks and I use it for the base and for the sides. Now, many of my things, I don't give actual dimensions because I more or less do a lot of my measuring by eye and I don't want to make the boxes so big that they'll be too heavy if they're full of fruits and vegetables for the men dolls to carry. Now here I'm just dry fitting my side panels to make sure there's enough room for me to add my coffee stir sticks so that they'll be concealed between the two side boards. So here I am adding a sparing amount of glue to the sides of the base piece so that I can attach the side panels. And you can see the well bond glue is really snatching it really quick because I don't even have to use any supports. I think it works really well as long as your project isn't too heavy. Now I'm measuring the little coffee stir sticks that are to be the slats between the two sides so that you'll be able to see the fruits and vegetables. I did have several pre-selected pieces that I pulled out of my what are you keeping that for bag, but I still needed to trim them so that they will be uniform and fit neatly between the two side panels. Now you definitely don't want to add a lot of glue to this particular crate because you will be able to see the inside even though it's going to be filled with fruits and vegetables. You want it to be as neat as possible. The well bond glue dries really clear and it's very forgiving but definitely try to be as neat as you can. Now the amount of slats that you add is totally up to you and it would probably depend on how big your coffee stir sticks are as well. Now, while that little box with the slats was drying, I went on to make another bigger crate. Now, this one, I've got all the pieces together, but it's not sticking as fast as I wanted to. So in order to create some tension and hold everything together, I just wrapped a rubber band all the way around it. Rubber bands are really great for holding things together while they dry. Just make sure everything is positioned the way you want it. Otherwise, things will dry out of alignment and you have to break it apart to set it correct. 
So if you're new to my channel, you're going to quickly find out that I don't know how to just make one item. It's almost as though my imagination breaks out and either like telescopes or kaleidoscopes or grows appendages. Creating one thing leads me to want to create something else, which leads me to create something else. So in the mix of creating the boxes, bins, and crates, I felt like bags and a couple more baskets would be appropriate as well. Now this is a little burlap sack that I made a couple years ago and I never filled it. But with all the new people in the rooming house community and the extra houses, I think we'll need a couple extra sacks for everyone at all the houses. So I made a few extras and allowed them to dry. And after they dried, I went on to trim off the excess around the edges so that I could turn them right side out. Now you do want to trim off as much excess as possible so that the bulk won't take up the room inside your sack. Now you will want to carefully turn it inside out. This particular burlap is not the type that I normally use, which is normally a tighter weave. This is a looser weave. So I kind of had to be a little bit more careful with it, but I think it's going to work out well after I fill it with the things like potatoes and apples and pears and things like that. It'll look really, really nice. Now you want to just gently um, turn it right side out. Now I made several different sizes. So keep in mind that although the pieces originally looked like they were pretty big, after you cut off the borders for, from the inside, they end up being pretty small, which will work perfect for my 12 scale kitchens. Now you can see now that I made several different sizes because I like variety. I really, really don't like it when everything looks the same or things are too uniform. But you see this sack, now this one, I kind of folded it over at the top. And when I fill it and kind of squish it down, it'll sit upright and you'll be able to see the contents, which is going to work really, really well when I get all my kitchen set up. So I have to put a few in the rooming house and in Aunt Bess and Aunt Janie's house. Now, in addition to the little bags, I wanted to create another type of basket. Maybe this is more like a crate with a handle, but when I get done, you'll know what I mean. But I will leave a link in the description so you can see the other baskets I created. So this one was made with a large jumbo craft stick and some birch wood coffee stir stick scraps. Now, I started it with using one layer of the coffee stir sticks around the perimeter of the jumbo craft stick. And after I got the first layer on, I thought it was pretty shallow and I felt like I needed a second layer. So I added another level to the borders. So while that's drying, let me show you this other crate I created. So the other two crates I made, I used my panels in a horizontal position. But for this particular crate, I made it with two of the panels being horizontal and the two on the ends being vertical. And it gives you a different... A profile or a different style crate. It looks to me more like a shipping crate more so than a farm crate. And when I get done, you'll be able to see what I mean. And those high sides help the lids to stay on better. Now here I am just adding glue to close up the other side, but I really think this style adds a lot of variety to my set of bins and boxes. And I actually did go on and create a lid by adding a fifth coffee stir stick to one of the original panels, and it's a perfect fit. Now let's get back to my little crate that I'm gonna create a handle for. Now I'm gonna just make a couple markings on the sides. Now you can definitely measure so you can have a, a really accurate um, distance between the two openings. Now I'm gonna drill some little holes so that I can add wire to create a handle, but it's really simple. I'm using my pin drill to open the holes up and you want to do it on both sides because I'm going to bind the wire together so that it'll be extra sturdy. Now dolls, I'm really sorry that I can't share what gauge uh, wire this is because it was just something I found among my bags of what are you keeping that for and I'm just trying to position it inside the holes so that it will be secure. I'm just using my needle nose wire cutters to twist the wire so that it won't stick out and poke the dolls in the hands when they're adding their fruits and vegetables. Now after I got one of the wires in I put another wire on it and I twisted it at the top where the handle would be and then went ahead to secure the other part of the wire in the second set of holes. 
and you just tuck it in there and again begin to twist it as much as you can with your fingers safely and then I use my wire cutters again to twist it around again so the pieces won't stick out and poke your fingers. Now you'll need to take your time with this for safety's sake. This is edited videos so it took me a lot longer to do this than what is shown in these frames. And after I had my wire secure in both of the sets of holes, I adjusted it so that it would actually look like a handle. I straightened things out. Now, I wasn't concerned about the wire not being straight. Now, you could use a firmer wire where it would be more rigid, which would be a really nice look as well. But I wasn't worried about it because these are supposed to be old crates, bins and baskets that the dolls have been using for years to go back and forth. So the wire being bent or a little bit mangled would be a natural occurrence over the years. Now this is one of those really, really tiny cocktail straws or coffee stir stick type things. And I just used it to split it down the middle. And I'm going to put it on the top part of the wire that kind of sits up to cover up the wire part and make it a lot more comfortable for my dolls to carry. And after I added wire to that basket, I decided I wanted to add some little wire handles to that little wine crate that I created a little while ago. Now this was a little bit tedious and took a little bit more patience, but in the end I was really pleased with it. So when it was time for me to stain my crates, bins, and boxes, I realized that I had run out of wood stain and I ended up using something that I actually had never used on wood. Now I normally use my alcohol and acrylic paint wash on metals and other things like that. So today I had to do what I've been teaching you dolls to do to use what I had and it worked out really well. And I really ended up being pleasantly surprised because I'd actually never used acrylic paint as stain before. I have seen a lot of other artists use it but I've always used wood stain but the result was really great, so I'll have to use this more often. And it really allowed for me to layer the color, which to me always gives a more authentic look than trying to add the full effect of the color in one coat. So I started with sort of a caramel color acrylic paint, then I added a regular brown color, and then I finished it off with a mixture of watered down black and brown to add age. I really got to say I really enjoyed this project because I love things that don't have to look perfect to be cute. So many times I think that there's so much focus on trying to create things with flawless precision and you miss out on the fun of the frenzy of just creating. And now that I've added stain to a couple of my boxes, here's my little basket and I think it turned out really, really cute. I really love that little red handle because that looks like something I've seen at the farmer's markets before. So everything's all constructed and stained. Now we can get on to the good part, my favorite part, which is the detailing. Now before I got to the part of detailing these little boxes and bins, I wanted to show you the smaller basket that I made. Now either of these could be good like for eggs or even bottles of milk. The concept was the same except I made the handle slightly different. Now here I'm showing myself playing for a little while just using sterling to check the size and scale. So I really feel good about the measurements or dimensions that I use for the boxes and bins that everything looks in scale. It doesn't look unnatural for a doll his size to be carrying or lifting these boxes. And here even with them between his hands the sizes look natural. So that's just another reason I like to use my dolls because I don't do a lot of really precise measuring. I just check to see if the items will look natural with them holding or using them or being in the room with the things that I create. So now for my detailing. So I had some little printed labels that I had been given and some that I had in my stash for quite some time. So I cut them out to use them as labels on some of my boxes and bins to give the impression that these are old fruit crates or old shipping containers that have been used repeatedly over the years to bring supplies and food to the residents of the rooming house and the surrounding community. Now again, these light labels are random and they're nice and small. So some of them I'm going to use directly, some of them I'm going to stick on in different directions, and some I'm even going to tear them and stain them to make it look as though they've been on there for years. 
Now this part is absolutely optional and you may not want your bins and boxes to look old, aged and dirty, but for me, that's my preference. Now I'm adding a little extra stain, um, some brown mixed with black and just kind of darkening the wood on the corners and around the edges, anywhere where I think that the boxes and crates would have been handled the most. And although I want the insides of the boxes to look relatively clean because they're using them to transport food year after year, they would have stains. Little things like aging and staining really transform a piece and really creates a dimension of realism that really can't be obtained any other way. And I'm really tickled about how cute those little labels look. I was saving some of them to use as labels when I do the food and kitchen supply series, but I think they look really cute on these crates and fruit boxes. Now, dolls, if you enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.